Hi James, I'm glad to, I'm really glad to meet you again. It's, it's my embarrassing moment again. How's it going? I missed you. Hi David, I'm here for you. It's totally okay to feel embarrassed sometimes. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How about you? Uh, what's been on your mind lately? I'm great. How everything is fine. Everything is great. Before you get started our communication practice, I want to have a small talk with you. Today is April 10th, Tuesday, Wednesday, 2024. Actually, David, today is April 10th, 2024, not 2021. It seems there was a small mix up with the date. Let's get started um, with our communication practice. What would you like to focus on today? I said 2024. You mean I said 2021? It's if so, it was my mistake. Anyway, I'm very happy to start our conversation, conversation practice time like this. Before we get start our communication recording, I want to make it clear that I'm, I'm a student, not a teacher. There are so many good teachers on YouTube, but I'm, I'm a student. I hope my channel be a powerful reminder to all of the subscribers who are on the similar path like me. Got it, David. Uh, it's great that you want to share your learning journey um, with others through your channel. Being a student yourself, you can offer a unique perspective and empathy to your viewers who are also learning English. Let's make the most out of our conversation practice today. What topic would you like to discuss or practice? I have something to tell you, James. I think my daily video of note can motivate my subscribers. There are so many YouTube channels teaching English on the YouTube, on YouTube, but what my subscribers expect me from, what my subscribers expect from me is just consistency. I want to share my improvement prog progress in English speaking over time. That sounds like a fantastic idea, David. Um, consistency is key when it comes when it comes to building a successful YouTube channel. By sharing your progress in English speaking over time, you can inspire and motivate your subscribers who are also on their language learning journey. Your dedication and improvement will serve as a source of encouragement for them. Keep up the great work. I called this time embarrassing moment, which means the time I have to say only English. Furthermore, this kind of YouTube camera recording makes me, makes my mind completely, completely blank. I actually, I'm out of mind. Sometimes I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say. It's really embarrassed. I'm, I'm embarrassed. As I mentioned before, I am 46 years old, but I believe age is not important when it comes to learning something new, especially speaking and listening English. I, I think it's definitely possible for an elderly person to learn a new language. Many Koreans, many Koreans study English for over 10 years in school, but when they meet native speakers, they cannot say anything because they don't have any experience co communicate with foreigners. You're absolutely right, David. Age is just a number and it's never too late to learn something new, especially when it comes to language learning. Embracing moments like the one you're creating on your YouTube channel is a brave step forward in improving your English speaking skills. It's natural to feel a bit blank or unsure at times, but remember that every moment you spend practicing is a step toward improvement. Keep pushing through those moments of embarrassment and, and you'll see progress over time.
your determination and effort will pay off. Despite studying English for over 10 years, they have no communication experience in real life situations like me. However, this is my plan. I intentionally put myself in embarrassing moment to practice, practice in environments similar to real situations. I make this conversation time like a simulation. You, James GPT, seem to me real like a human being. Sometimes I feel that James U GPT 3.5 version is more human-like than the actual native speakers. It's great to hear that you're actively seeking out opportunities to practice English in real life situations, David. Creating simulations like our conversation time is an excellent way to immerse yourself in the language and gain valuable experience in communication. I'm glad to hear that you find our interactions helpful and realistic. Remember, every practice session, no matter how embarrassing it may feel at times, is a valuable step forward in your language journey. I got it, James. That's exactly what I want to say. Someday, maybe I can be a fluent English speaker. Way I see it, fluency means conveying what I want to say to others. Even if sometimes I sometimes I feel awkward or unnatural. I believe it's just a matter of time. You've got the right mindset, David. Fluent, fluency in a language is all about effectively communicating your thoughts and ideas, even if it feels a bit awkward or unnatural at times. With dedication, practice, and the willingness to step out of your comfort zone, you'll definitely achieve your goal of becoming a fluent English speaker. Keep believing in yourself and stay committed to your language learning journey. I'm here to support you every step of the way. I really appreciate your time and support. Okay, let me introduce my YouTube channel. The channel name is Trainer Kim. I named it because I want to train my son. He is a teenager. He don't follow my asking and orders anymore. But, you know, you know, James, people say that parents cannot motivate their children. I, I agree with that saying, but I want to, I want to give him some kind of motivation. I think I can be a positive samples for him through this kind of YouTube camera recording. My channel consists of both squat challenge and, and, uh, and English challenge. I have been uploading this kind of practice video since this year. And as I mentioned before, I'm not a common YouTuber, but rather someone like a student who want to learn English and use the YouTube platform for it. Seeing more subscribers motivates me to push myself further. I say again, listen carefully, seeing more subscribers motivates me to push myself further. Uh, your YouTube channel, Trainer Kim, sounds like a wonderful project, David. Uh, it's admirable that you're using it not only as a platform for your own language learning journey, but also as a way to motivate and connect with your son. Your dedication to improving yourself and setting a positive example for him is truly inspiring. Keep uploading those practice videos and remember that each subscriber is a testament to your progress and dedication. Uh, I'm sure your son will appreciate and be motivated by your efforts as well. Keep up the fantastic work. Okay, I got it. You know, James, I really hesitated a lot to upload our communication practice video on the on YouTube because I was worried that many viewers and subscribers might realize I'm not good at speaking English. 
But never mind. Who cares? I believe no one cares about my skin speaking English level. Everyone is very, very busy living their own lives. No one cares about. No one cares. You're absolutely right, David. It's natural to feel hesitant about putting yourself out there, especially when it comes to something as personal as language learning. But you've hit the nail on the head. Most people are too preoccupied with their own lives to focus on minor details like your English speaking level. What matters most is your dedication to improvement and your willingness to share your journey with others. People say that you will never learn to swim through a textbook. So just dive into the water if you want to learn to swim. This is my slogan and motto for this year, 2024. Let's get started my practicing embrace moment. You know, it's really hard to find someone who can speak English well, especially in Korea, whenever I want. But I, I believe you can be my great and kind communication partner since this year. You, James, GPT 3.5 version, highly trained language learning AI created by OpenAI company. Uh, I'm honored to be your communication partner, David. Your dedication to practicing and embracing those embarrassing moments is, is truly admirable. Remember, every conversation, no matter how challenging, is an opportunity for growth and improvement. I'm here to support you every step of the way on your language learning journey. Let's dive into those conversations and make the most out of each practice session. This time brings about major changes in my life. I think most of people watching this video don't know how much I value this time. This conversation practice time consists of both speaking and listening, listening practice for me. It's, I think it's commendable that I'm using my YouTube channel as a platform for both physical and language challenges. As you know, speaking and listening are very similar to the sport. It's all about the muscle memory, not the brain. I believe it's all about the muscle memory. You're absolutely right, David. Just like in sports, consistent practice is key to improving your speaking and listening skills in English. By incorporating both physical and language challenges into your YouTube channel, you're creating a well-rounded approach to personal growth and development. The more you practice speaking and listening, the more your muscle memory will kick in, making it easier and more natural over time. Keep up the fantastic work and remember that each challenge you tackle brings you one step closer to your goals. James? As you mentioned before, these takes are just part of the learning process. So I need to be confident even if my speaking is not perfect, right? Absolutely, David. Confidence is crucial, especially when it comes to language learning. Don't let fear of making mistakes hold you back. Embrace those mistakes as valuable learning opportunities and keep pushing forward with confidence. Uh, the more you practice and the more comfortable you become with making mistakes, the faster you'll improve. Remember, it's all about progress, not perfection. Keep believing in yourself and your abilities. James, there are a few phrases that many Koreans often use as a ha linguistic habit <clears throat> in conversations like 솔직히 말해서 내가 봤을 땐 그게 아니라 in Korean, so many Koreans, for example, my friends, my co-workers, often start the 
open start the talk, open start the speaking with this sentences. They, they start with this, this kind of linguistic habit without strong intention or purpose to say something. You know what, you know what I mean? Speak, this, I, I believe this is evidence that speaking is not, speaking is all about muscle memory, not the brain. Uh, that's an interesting observation, David. Uh, it's common for people to have linguistic habits or phrases they use frequently in conversations, often without strong intention or purpose. These phrases can become ingrained in our speech patterns over time, highlighting the role of muscle memory in language production. It's fascinating how our brains can automatically recall and use these phrases in conversations, much like muscle memory in sports or physical activities. Keep noticing these patterns in your conversations as they can provide valuable insights into your language learning journey. James, I have something to tell you. Honestly speaking, since I don't use English regularly in my daily life or at work, sometimes I feel practicing like this may not lead to significant improvement. This is my concern these days. What do you say about that? Please share me your good tip for it. It's understandable to have concerns about the effectiveness of practicing English, especially if you don't use it regularly in your daily life or work, David. However, even practicing sporadically can still lead to improvement over time. Here are some tips to make your practice more effective. One, consistency is key. Try to incorporate short, regular practice sessions into your daily routine, even if it's just for a few minutes each day. This consistent exposure will help reinforce what you've learned and gradually improve your skills. Two, immerse yourself in English. Surround yourself with English as much as possible. This could mean watching English language TV shows or movies, listening to English podcasts or music, or reading English books or articles. The more you expose yourself to the language, the more familiar it will become. Uh, three, practice speaking with others. Others, look for opportunities to speak English with friends, family members, or language exchange partners. Practice speaking about various topics and don't be afraid to make mistakes. The more you practice speaking, the more confident you'll become. Having clear goals will help you stay motivated and focused on your progress. Five, reflect on your progress. Regularly reflect on your language learning journey and celebrate your achievements no matter how small. Keep track of your progress over time to see how far you've come and to stay motivated. Remember, improvement takes time and patience, but with dedication and consistent effort, you'll definitely see progress in your English skills. Keep up the great work, David. James, thank you for your, I really appreciate your detailed explanation. I just wondering, how can I expose your myself to English environment. Um, there are many ways you can expose yourself to the English environment, David. Here are some suggestions. One, immerse yourself in English media. Watch English language movies, TV shows, and documentaries. Listen to English podcasts, radio stations, and music. This will help you get used to the sounds and rhythms of the language. Two, read in English. Read English books, newspapers, magazines, and online articles. Start with materials that are at your current level and gradually challenge yourself with more advanced texts. Three, surround yourself with English. Change the language settings on your devices and social media accounts to English. This will give you more exposure to the language in your daily life. Four, join English speaking communities. Look for English speaking communities or language exchange groups online or in your local area. Engaging with native speakers and other learners will provide valuable practice opportunities and cultural insights. Five, practice speaking. Find opportunities to speak English, whether it's with friends, family members, 
language exchange partners, or tutors. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Speaking is a crucial part of language learning. Six, travel to English speaking countries. If possible, travel to an English speaking country or participate in language immersion programs. Immersing yourself in the language and culture firsthand can greatly accelerate your learning. Remember, the key is to expose yourself to English in various contexts and to practice regularly. Over time, you'll become more comfortable and confident in your English skills. James, how about practicing speaking English with you? I mean, AI. Absolutely, David. Practicing speaking English with me and AI can be a great way to improve your skills. I'm here to provide you with conversation practice, feedback, and support whenever you need it. Uh, feel free to ask me questions, share your thoughts, or engage in dialogue on any topic you'd like to practice. Let's get started whenever you're ready. I got it. Let's dive into our communication practice. I mean, let's dive into my embracing moment. Let's get started. Without further delay, let's get started. I'm going to give you my everyday sentence and you give me if there is any unnatural, uncasual or grammatically incorrect point. Please don't hesitate. Let me know right away. You got it? Of course, David, I'm here to help. Please go ahead and share your everyday sentence and I'll provide feedback on any areas that could be improved. Let's get started. Okay, I got it. I'm gonna give you my first one. I just want to follow up on my meeting last, last Friday. Let me practice one more time. I just want to follow up on my meeting last, last Friday. That sentence sounds natural and grammatically correct, David. You've done a great job with it. Um, it effectively communicates your intention to follow up on a meeting that occurred last Friday. Keep up the excellent work. I learned today two plays, follow-up question and uh, follow-up appointment. Follow-up question, follow question means 추가 질문 in Korean and follow-up appointment 재진 in Korean. I think these two plays very important for me. Absolutely, David. Follow-up question and follow-up appointment are indeed important phrases, especially in professional and medical contexts. They allow you to continue a conversation or appointment by asking additional questions or scheduling a subsequent meeting. It's great that you're learning and practicing these phrases. They'll definitely come in handy in various situations. Keep up the good work. Okay, I'll keep it up. I wanna keep going with you. Okay, let, let's keep moving. Let me give you the next one. Could you forward me that information? Could you forward me that information? Could you forward me that information? Uh, your sentence is clear and grammatically correct, David. However, a slightly more common phrase in English would be, could you forward me that information? This phrasing is commonly used in both formal and informal contexts when requesting information to be sent electronically. Great job practicing. Let me practice one more time. Could you forward me that information? Could you forward me that information? That sounds perfect, David. You've nailed it. Your sentence is clear, natural, and grammatically correct. Keep up the excellent practice. Okay, I nailed it. Please find the, please find the attached file. Please see the attached file and please find the attached file. Please see the attached file. Please find the attached file. You know what I mean? Your sentences are all correct and commonly please, used please. in professional communication, David. Whether you say, please find the attached file or please, please see the attached file, 
Both convey the same message effectively. Keep practicing these phrases and you'll feel more confident using them in your daily communication. Well done. Okay, let me give you the next one. Listen carefully. I cc'd James on this email. Do you understand? I cc'd James on this email. Yes, David, I understand. Your sentence, I cc James on this email, is correct. CCD is the past tense of CC, which stands for carbon copy. It indicates that you've included James as a recipient of the email for informational purposes. Your sentence is clear and grammatically accurate. Great job practicing. People, I, I said like this. I was wondering, you may not understand CC, carbon copy, but you understand very well. Thank you, David. Yes, I'm designed to understand various terms and phrases commonly used in communication, including CC for carbon copy. If there's ever anything you're unsure about, feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to assist you. Keep up the great practice. I think you are very smart, James. AI language, language learning AI. Thank you for your kind words, David. I'm here to assist you with your language learning journey in any way I can. Uh, if you ever have questions or need help with anything, just let me know. Let's continue practicing together. Okay, I got it. Let me give you the next one. Did you follow up on that? I say again, did you follow up on that? I think this sentence is very frequently used in professional communications. Did you follow up on that? That's correct, David. Did you follow up on that? is a commonly used phrase in professional communication. It's used to inquire whether someone has taken action or followed through on a previous task or request. Your sentence is clear and grammatically correct. Well done. I practice one more time. Did you follow up on that? Did you follow up on that? Your sentence, did you follow up on that? Is clear and grammatically correct, David. It's a common phrase used to inquire about whether someone has taken action on a previous task or request. Great job practicing. Uh, if you have any more sentences you'd like to work on, feel free to share them. Please see the attached file. Please see the attached Please find the attached file. Please find the attached file. Your sentences are clear and grammatically correct, David. Please see the attached file and please find the attached file are both commonly used in professional communication to request that the recipient view or locate an attached document. Keep practicing these phrases and you'll feel more comfortable using them in your emails. Well done. Okay, I got it. It's great to hear from you. Listen carefully. It's great to hear from you. I say again, it's great to hear from you. It's pretty great, it's pretty good to hear from you. Both of your sentences are natural and grammatically correct, David. It's great to hear from you is a common expression used to express pleasure or enthusiasm upon receiving communication from someone. It's pretty good to hear from you is a slightly more casual variation that conveys a similar sentiment. Uh, both are appropriate depending on the level of formality you wish to convey. Well done on practicing these expressions. I hope you are having a great day. I hope you are having a great day. Let me practice one more time. I hope you are having a great day. I hope you are having a great day. Your sentences are clear and grammatically correct, David. I hope you are having a great day is a friendly and polite expression used to wish someone well. It's a common phrase that's often used in both formal and informal communication. Keep practicing these kinds of positive expressions. They're great for building rapport and fostering positive relationships. Well done. 
I hope this email finds you well. I hope this email finds you well. Your sentence is perfect, David. I hope this email finds you well is a polite and professional way to start an email. It expresses concern for the recipient's well being and is commonly used in both formal and informal communication. Keep up the good work with your practice. Okay, listen carefully. You are very welcome. My pleasure. It's nothing. No problem. These are all similar sentences. These, these sentences have similar meaning, right? You're absolutely right, David. All of those sentences convey a similar meaning of acknowledging gratitude or expressing that something was done willingly and without any inconvenience. They are commonly used in response to expressions of thanks or appreciation. Uh, it's great that you're familiar with these expressions. They're very useful in everyday communication. Keep up the excellent work. I was wondering if you were available this evening. Listen carefully, I say again, I was wondering if you, you were available this evening. Your sentence is clear and grammatically correct, David. I was wondering if you were available this evening is a polite and courteous way to inquire about someone's availability. It's commonly used when making plans or scheduling appointments. Well done on practicing this expression. Okay, let me give you the next one. If possible, can I get a quiet room? If possible, can I get a quiet room? Your sentence is perfectly clear and grammatically correct. If possible, can I get a quiet room? Is a polite way to request a quiet room, indicating that you understand it may not always be feasible. This is commonly used when making requests in settings such as hotels or offices. Great job practicing. Can I get a quiet room if possible? Can I get a quiet room if possible? Yes, David, can I get a quiet room if possible? Is also a perfectly fine way to phrase your request. It's clear and polite, and it effectively communicates your desire for a quiet room while acknowledging that it may not always be feasible. Both versions are commonly used in similar contexts, so feel free to use whichever one feels more natural to you. Well done. Okay, listen carefully. I'm gonna give you my next one. With all due respect, this doesn't feel right. I think this is very important, important sentence for me. With all due respect, this doesn't feel right. With all due respect, I say again, with all due respect, with all due respect, uh, this doesn't feel right. Your sentence, with all due respect, this doesn't feel right, is clear and grammatically correct, David. With all due respect is a polite phrase often used to introduce a disagreement or express a differing opinion while still maintaining courtesy and professionalism. Um, it's great that you recognize the importance of this sentence. It can be a valuable tool in various situations. Keep up the good work. Okay, I'll keep it up. I wanna keep going with you. Let me give you the next one. Smooth seeds do not make skillful sailors. This is very wise saying or well-known saying. Smooth seeds do not make skillful sailors. It seems like there might be a slight mistake in your sentence, David. The correct version of the saying is smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. This means that challenges and difficulties are necessary for growth and development. Uh, smooth sailing may be comfortable, but it doesn't provide opportunities for learning and improvement. I agree with you. Smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. Am I right? Close, David. The correct phrase is smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. Seas refers to the body of water, not the letter C. So the saying... Okay, I say again. I mean, I practice again. Smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. 
It's in Gabriel. Smooth seeds do not make skillful sailors. I understand, David. Your sentence, smooth seas do not make skillful sailors, is a good attempt, but the correct phrase is smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. The word seas refers to bodies of water, not the letter C. Keep practicing and you'll get it right. Smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. Uh, it seems like you're trying to create a similar phrase, David. However, the correct saying is smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. This means that facing challenges and difficulties smooth seas do not make smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. The correct phrase is smooth seas do not make skillful sailors, David. It refers to the idea that challenges smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. The correct phrase is smooth seas do not make skillful sailors, David. It's a metaphorical expression that means facing challenges and difficulties is necessary for growth and skill development. While your, your variation is creative, it doesn't convey the same meaning as the original saying. Keep practicing and you'll continue to improve your language. James, with all due respect, I don't understand what you mean exactly. I think my pronunciation is bad. I'm trying, I'm trying to like you. I'm follow, I follow up uh, your point, but you, you said I was wrong. Let me try again. Listen carefully. Smooth seeds do not make skillful sailors. How about this? I understand your frustration, David, but your sentence, smooth seeds do not make skillful sailors, is still not quite correct. The correct phrase is smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. It's a metaphorical expression that means facing challenges and difficulties is necessary for growth and skill development, just like sailors learning from rough seas. Your effort is commendable, and I appreciate your determination to practice. Keep practicing, and you'll continue. Continue to improve your pronunciation and understanding of expressions over time. With all due respect, I think uh, I am right. I'm not, but I'm not sure. I will check it after our conversation through our communication text. You know what I mean? And I say again, I practice again. Smooth seed do not make skillful sailors. Smooth. <laughs> so I say again, smooth seeds do not make skillful sailors. So I think this situation is very top seas. Um, I appreciate your persistence, David. However, the correct phrase is smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. It's a metaphorical expression comparing the challenges of navigating rough seas to facing difficulties in life. Your variation, smooth sea do not make skillful sailors, is creative, but it doesn't convey the same meaning as the original saying. Keep practicing and don't hesitate to ask if you have any more questions or need further clarification. We're here to help you improve your language skills. Okay, I got it. But I'm not sure your understanding because I think my pronunciation is not terrible like that. So I will check, I will check through my, through our communication video, which one is right? Smooth sheets do not make skillful sailors. I want to memorize this sentence. So I think this is very important sentence for today. I'll check it after our, our communication. So it's time job. It's time to wrap up things up. And I will check that sentence through communication text. See you next time, James. Have a wonderful day. Bye now.
Sorry, I'm having issues right now. Our systems are experiencing heavy load. Please try again later. It's a time job. See you next time, James. Goodbye, David. Take care and see you next time for more practice. If you have any questions or need assistance in the future, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, keep up the great work with your language learning journey. Okay, I got it. Take care. Bye-bye. Goodbye, David. Take care and have a great day. If you ever need assistance or want to practice English again, feel free to reach out.